up guys? It's your girl Friss Me Good, your favorite fashion designer and fashion icon. And welcome back to my channel where we talk all things fashion. So today I'm gonna be continuing my series where we talk about the iconic fashion brands that made a significant impact on pop culture. In this series, we explore the rise, the fall, or the comeback of fashion empires that made their mark on fashion history. Now, I know I'm not the only one who used to be obsessed with Kimora Lee Simmons. I remember binge watching Kimora Life in the Fab Lane whenever there was a marathon airing on the Style Network. Before I even knew I wanted to be a fashion designer, Kimora had a tremendous influence on me. All I knew is I wanted to be just like her. In this cutthroat world of fashion, we rarely see women of color who have been able to infiltrate this male dominated industry and make a name for themselves. Kimora Lee Simmons is one of the original fashion icons who led the way for female designers like me to have a space in the industry. In this episode, we'll be diving head first into the glamorous world of Kimora Lee Simmons to explore the captivating history of baby fat and the visionary behind it. The E! True Hollywood Story. Kimora Lee Simmons, model, designer, and worldwide fashion phenomenon. Kimora Lee Simmons is living the American dream. Kimora heads up Baby Fat, a sassy, sexy clothing line she started 10 years ago. We're talking business with Kimora Lee Simmons of Fat Fashions. I'm Kimora Lee Simmons, and this is my life in the fat lane. When a woman wears baby fat, she feels fashion forward. I almost think it transforms you. So whatever you were before, forget it. Now that you're dressed, you're ready for the world. From its very beginning, Baby Fat was destined for a place in history. However, this wasn't Kimura's first rodeo in the world of fashion. The designer had previously been discovered by Karl Lagerfeld, catapulting her from obscurity into the limelight. I was always a lot taller than most people. I was rather clumsy because you are when you grow so many inches so quickly. And I, I was always different than a lot of people. Most people thought, what are you? You look so funny, you know? And I, I always went home, I look so funny. And eventually people, no, you don't look funny. This works for you. Lagerfeld selected her as an exclusive Chanel model at the age of 14, eventually elevating her to the status of his muse, which allowed her to get her foot in the door with the upper echelons in the industry. Following her marriage to Russell Simmons in 1998, Kimora Lee Simmons was presented with a prototype of a women's t-shirt from Fat Farm. She was disappointed with the sample, later describing it as very athletic and basic, a scaled down version of what a guy will wear. Drawing on her experience as a fashion model, Simmons decided to step into the role of designer and creative director to create a collection that she thought better represented what women actually wanted to wear. And in 1999, Baby Fat by Kimora Lee Simmons was launched. We don't give a damn if you can wear it or not. It's beautiful and it's sexy and it'll get you a date, it'll get you laid, it'll get you recognized, it'll make you feel sexy. The brand began with low-rise jeans and tops adorned with rhinestones and the cat-covered logo inspired by her pet Siamese cat, Max. Simmons later says she created the collection because, quote, women, especially women of color, had no voice in the streetwear industry. It's in our DNA. This brand is created for women, by women. The baby fat aesthetic is young and fun. We started off as a jean company, but we have fashion, main apparel, outerwear. We're a lifestyle brand, so it's everything that embodies that lifestyle of a fashionable, fearless woman. The iconic cat logo with its sleek and stylish feline silhouette became a symbol of confidence and empowerment, representing the bold spirit of the brand. The logo was a cultural statement, making baby fat a staple in the closets of fashion-forward individuals around the world. Simmons' first independent showcase for baby fat was during New York Fashion Week in 2000. The event was broadcast from Radio City Music Hall to the Jumbotron in Times Square. I think of baby fat as an aspirational lifestyle brand. I see everything that we as girls need in our lives to do what we gotta do with these guys, with our jobs, with whatever. So I hope to give that to the women in a sexy, affordable way. 
Similar to Fat Farm, Baby Fat celebrated black culture unapologetically, earning itself the label of an urban brand in the eyes of the fashion elite. Deviating from conventional routes to commercial success, Baby Fat opted for a unique approach, collaborating with well-known hip-hop artists to directly reach its customer base. And Baby Fat drew plenty of support from female celebs as well. All the celebrities had on Baby Fat. Little Kim had on Baby Fat, Aaliyah had on Baby Fat, everybody had on Baby Fat. Mary J was a Baby Fat signature. The girls behind the scene were Baby Fat girls. Destiny's Child had Baby Fat. Everybody had a little bit of Baby Fat. Even if it wasn't Baby Fat anymore and it was grown fat, it was okay in your Baby Fat. <laughs> I mean, even the white girls was wearing Baby Fat. Paris Hilton, she had her Baby Fat on. We were proud to know that it was by a bad girl, but it was for everybody. Though it was an unconventional marketing strategy, its seamless integration with hip hop culture swiftly ascended Baby Fat into the realm of pop culture awareness. It's stylish, it's different, it's sexy, and I think that's what's hot about it. I'm here to support uh, Kamora and Russell Simmons, introducing Baby Fat or uh, the lingerie line. I'm here to see some pretty women. You know. The great collection was really great. I felt like a lot of it was based around what I already do and what I've done. And you know, that's great that I can have an impact and be very, you know, noticeable in my style. In 2001, just two years after its inception, Baby Fat by Kamora Lee Simmons reported a gross revenue of $30 million, a milestone that had taken Fat Farm a total of six years to achieve. A year later, the annual revenue surged from $30 million to an impressive $265 million, eventually catapulting the company to a valuation of $1 billion. Hi everybody, Kamora Lee Simmons here. And you are at the house of Baby Fat. We are preparing for our fall 2005 collection. So come on in. Part of New York City Fashion Week is a very important thing. Sort of like an I have arrived, here I am. It's the time that all the major designers show their collection. It takes a lot of people, a lot of energy, a lot of love. And it takes a lot of money. But that's neither here nor there. You know, we beg, cheat, and steal to get our money. When I come here to work, I am putting my heart and soul into this. It's fashion. I've been involved in fashion since I was 12, 13 years old. I started off as a model. Now I've remixed it a little bit. I'm on the other side. Now I'm, you know, behind the scenes. When I'm designing, culturally I'm thinking of myself and my family and my life and what I have to offer people. I'm selling a lifestyle. I'm selling my lifestyle to people. In 2003, the company saw a further 30% increase in revenue. Baby Fat by Kamora Lee Simmons emerged as the most lucrative among fat fashions for labels. A few years later, the brand was at the top of their game and secured noteworthy collaborations with various brands. These ventures included a partnership with Visa to introduce a branded prepaid Rush Visa card under the Baby Fat by Kamora Lee Simmons name. It's a prepaid Visa card. There's no credit check. Everyone is eligible to sign up. You don't even need a bank account. Just go to rushcard.com. Choose your style and we'll rush your card to you. Some fees and restrictions may apply. Additionally, Baby Fat collaborated with Vita Shoes International in the same year to craft a line of footwear featuring stilettos, wedges, boots, and toddler shoes. 2004 was definitely a year of wins. That year, Baby Fat opened its inaugural brick and mortar retail store in the vibrant Soho neighborhood in New York City. Further expanding its product offerings, the brand partnered with Cody Inc. to introduce Baby Fat Goddess, a fragrance that was available at department stores nationwide. In 2006, Simmons was promoted to president of Baby Fat's parent company, Fat Fashions. And later that year, Baby Fat by Kamora Lee Simmons created a 200-piece lingerie collection that was carried at upmarket department stores. And of course, we all remember those iconic Baby Fat phones that also hit the scene in the early 2000s. The brand joined forces with Motorola to produce the exclusive Baby Fat by Kamora Lee Simmons i833 mobile phone available exclusively at Bloomingdale's. 
The baby fat phone was truly a pop culture staple during the time. People still draw Y2K inspiration from the photo of Cameron in pink from head to toe, right down to the flip phone he's holding. What you might not know is that this now iconic 2000s photo was taken outside of a baby fat show, and that the flip phone itself can be attributed to Kimura's ever-expanding baby fat empire. Under Kimura's creative direction, baby fat became a cultural phenomenon, blending fashion with streetwear and setting trends that resonated with a diverse audience. Kimura would go on to get a ton of press in the media for her incredible contributions in the fashion industry. From camera crews visiting her home to get a sneak peek into her closet, to appearances on daytime talk shows. I was talking to somebody recently and they said, you know, there's a lot of these celebrity lines coming out and famous people yes. coming out with a lot of stuff. And a lot of them aren't really selling that well. But yours, Baby Fat and KLS is still selling like crazy. Why do you think that is? Well, our brands are pushing a billion dollars now. And uh, I'm not a celebrity turned designer. Mm -hmm. I'm a fashion girl turned celebrity. Because I've always been, you know, backstage. We've been on the runway since we were teenagers. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing Baby Fat for over 10 years. So I don't have another career that I fall back on. My career is fashion. Kimura solidified herself as the original definition of a girl boss, as her business endeavors even expanded to reality TV. Her show, Kimura Life in the Fab Lane, premiered on August 5, 2007 on the Style Network. Her series followed the daily life of her and her family, along with various people who worked for and with her. Watch out, West Coast. Uh -uh. Kimura's bringing her fabulous new family to LA. Ooh. And she's taking over the town, one over the top. Start, start, start. Out of control. I'm gonna go crazy and tear up everything in the room. Unbelievable step at a time. This is not acceptable. You all are upsetting me and a woman cannot have proper milk let down under stress. You're acting real Hollywood. The new season of Kimura Life in the Fab Lane is coming in March to style. Before meets after. Kimura Life in the Fab Lane had four seasons and eventually landed a spinoff show called Kimura House of Fab that debuted on January 23rd, 2013. This series showed Kimura's day-to-day -day life at Just Fab. Simmons was hired in 2011 after the company raised $33 million in first round capital. The show focused solely on Simmons' career with the company rather than her home life as shown in Kimura Life in the Fab Lane and will only air one season with eight episodes. This is the House of Fab. It's fashion, people. From modeling. You look amazing. Nailed it. To designing my own clothing line. To make sure I get the whole collection right. I've always been at the forefront of fashion. Clearly, we need some more pumps. And now, I'm the president and creative director of Just Fab. This is her Morley Simmons. Habla inglés. For the last 10 years, I built Baby Fat into a lifestyle brand. Now, I'm taking on a new challenge with Just Fab to build an all-new empire yet again. Just Fab is an exclusive online fashion shopping site. We offer bags, shoes, jewelry, sunglasses, accessories, everything you need to get ready from head to toe. I'm gonna push this team like they have never been pushed before. Hubba hubba and change everything around really fast. I want Just Fab to be a household name and I expect everyone to come with me. Let's go people. And like any iconic brand, Baby Fat faced a share of challenges. Kimura Lee stepped away from the brand when her contract with the Kelwood company ended in 2010. At the same time, Kelwood sold fat fashions to Sun Capital Partners, and Simmons declined to renew her position with the company's new owners. I do want to say that what we have at Kelwood is, is, um, is greater than just what we're going to do with Fat Farm and Baby Fat and the Russell Simmons collection, and we have the Jeff Jeff University brand, which is shipping now for the first time. Isn't that correct? That's right. And that was the first and the second investment you made because we also have Run Athletics. So we have three brands, or three groups of brands with Kelvin. And so they're instantly the leaders in this space. And I think that's a great transformation for the all-in muscle and know-how and infrastructure. Uh, we think that if we go to work every day, we'll make a, you look at your watch, right? <laughs> like this All right, so that's, I just want to thank everybody, really. I'm very proud. I'm, I'm really excited about the future. And we have a great opportunity, and hopefully we'll open doors for a lot of people. Thank you. Upon her exit from Fat Fashions, Simmons retained ownership of all licensing rights to her fragrance and cosmetic collection, so the legacy continued. After a long hiatus, Baby Fat made a triumphant return in 2019 for International Women's Day. 
The brand made a comeback through an accessible 18-piece collaboration with Forever 21. They captivated a new generation with its nostalgic yet modern designs. This budget-friendly collection features the brand's renowned velour tracksuits, oversized hoodies, and puffer jackets. Timeless essentials that have seamlessly integrated into contemporary wardrobes. Talk to us about this new announcement that you have today because it is actually very exciting and it goes to your, your entrepreneurship as well. Yes, so um, as a part, of, I'm excited to, to actually announce this on International Women's Day, but I have a brand, it's called Baby Fat, Baby we Fat by Coralie Simmons, and I started 20 something years ago. Um, and I've recently just purchased that uh, company back. And so I'll be relaunching that and rolling that out um, this year. And for many people who, who know me and know of my start, then they remember that it's always been kind of a family journey for me. And I have two little girls, Ming and Aoki. I also have two young boys, Kenzo and Wolf. But Ming and Aoki, they kind of know from the show and from always being with me in the atelier and in the design room and going down the runway. So now they're older, 16 and 19, um, and they will be helping me, helping me with the reins, so to speak, helping me at the helm. While the appearance may have evolved since its initial debut in the early 2000s, Baby Fat continues to embody its distinctive ghetto fabulous aesthetic, serving as a symbol for women of color across diverse generations. You can now purchase Baby Fat directly from their website. The brand is keeping momentum with new collections that capture the essence of the OG Baby Fat aesthetic. Kimura truly opened doors for female designers who want to make an impact in streetwear. And personally, I feel like we don't have enough female representation in fashion in general. It's deeper than there not being enough representation in streetwear. Majority of the brands we're going to be discussing on this channel are primarily owned by men, which in my research, some of them come as a surprise. And my hope is that in the near future, this new generation of women and women of color can have brands just as successful as their male counterparts. I mean, when you really think about it, there aren't enough women-owned fashion houses that are as big as Louis and Gucci and Prada. A study from the Council of Fashion Designers of America titled The Glass Runway found that of the top 50 fashion houses in the world, only 14% of them are run by female executives. And we need to change that, even if that means creating our own world. In the future, I hope to be one of the pioneers for the future of women in fashion. I mean, for superlatives in college, I actually got runner up for most likely to be a CEO, so it only makes sense, but time will tell. That's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this inspiring deep dive about the baby fat empire. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a comment below letting me know what fashion empire you wanna hear about next. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so we can talk all things fashion. Also, if you like this video, go ahead and check out my other deep dives about fashion empires that made a significant impact on pop culture. All right, see you guys later. Bye.